Hole in a Box by CSR. Chapter 19. Promises Kept by Liars. Stop! Darlena yelled at the yellow man who inched toward her and the dying girl. How could you? She cared about you. She adored and believed in you. She trusted you. And you did this to her. I just want to help, Javis said with a weak voice. You did this to her. I think you've helped enough. Just get out of here. You can't feed a devourer someone with a broken heart, so there's no point in being here. Darlene. Just go! She was screaming at him. Please. One of the most efficient ways to heal a broken heart is to have the one who broke it make it better. I'm the one who broke her heart. So I might be the only one who can help her now. And why would you want to do that? Huh? So you can feed her to your master? Like Boulder's Pit will I let you touch her. And besides, it has to be sincere to work, not charm. Damn it all, Darlene. I want to help. I, I do care about her. I said all those things to get her to leave so she wouldn't get herself killed. Christian really wants her and will stop at nothing to get her. I was trying to protect her. I know if I told her just to stay away, she would still have help. So I thought that if I'd hurt her, she wouldn't want to see me again. I didn't mean to break her heart. Then why? Why are you working for Kristen? I cannot not work for him. I'll die. Then I'd rather die than be the death of all these innocent children. You have a choice. No, I don't. It, it's not that simple. We're wasting our time talking about this. Please, let me talk to Marla. Please. I can't guarantee I can help her, but I at least want to apologize. She deserves an apology, more than anyone. You know that. You know that she needs to hear someone apologize to her, at least once, and mean it. Darlene stared at Javis angrily. Her breathing was heavy, but she knew he was right. How could he make this worse? <sighs> Fine. Javis tiptoed over to the girl on the floor. He kneeled next to her and took off his hat. Hello, Marla. Marla turned her face away from him, down at the floor. Yes, I wouldn't want to talk to me either. Javis sweetly smiled and looked to see if the girl's facial expression changed. Nothing happened, so he continued. You didn't deserve to hear something like that. I'm supposed to be good with words, but it seems like my talking just made everything worse, huh? You really are a special and sweet girl. Meeting you was something... Uh, meeting you was the best thing that has ever happened to me. It was more than I could ever ask for. You're so creative and kind and so enduring. I don't understand how you were able to do this for so long. I never thought that a coward like me would be the downfall of such a mighty structure. Marla, I am so sorry for this. I never should have come... Well, I didn't have a choice. Christon owns me, and I can't get away. Who are we fooling? That's not a real excuse. Truth be told, I didn't care very much at first. But I started to get to know you and some of the previous children, and it started to get hard. I'm... I'm a terrible person. You shouldn't have let me into your heart so easily. I... He grabbed hold of her hand. I know that I could never forgive myself if your heart never healed. Sweet bird, I want to hear your cheerful voice. Just at least once more. To see your bewildered face whenever someone does something nice for you. To receive another one of your drawings. To receive another one of your drawings. Because you're just so grateful over something that you deserve more than anything. I'll do anything, anything, to see any of those things happen again. I'll do anything, anything, to see those things happen again. I'll protect you from Christian. For as long as my body physically can, I don't care what happens to me at this point because I feel awful. Marla's fingers started to curl around Javis's hand. I hate who I am for doing such horrible things to you. 
I really do care about you, Mala. I'm sorry that I lied to you and tried to manipulate you, tried to lead you to your demise. I... I'm so sorry, sweet bird. I'm... Javis! Marla cried as she jumped up from the floor and onto Javis. I forgive you. Are you crying? <laughs> yeah. You, you were right. You, your feelings came back. Javis said in surprise. Darlene watched in excitement, but then became very cautious as to what Javis would do next. Don't forgive me. I haven't earned that. Or your tears. I don't care. I want you to have them. And my gratitude. Stop being so sweet, sweet bird. He put his hand on Marla's head and petted her hair. I have a favor to ask of you. Marla immediately jerked back to beat Javis's black eyes with her hazels. Yes? I need you to take me to Kristen. What? I want to talk to him. I'm going to try and free you, Javis. And make him stop eating children. I am fighting back. Marla, I might not be able to protect you in his presence. His hold on me will be stronger. It'll be extremely hard to resist his commands. Then stay away. No matter what, I will talk to him. Darlena exhaled and said, <sighs> When she has her heart set on something, she won't stop until she gets it. There's no stopping her, but we can still try to protect her. Or at least I can. If you don't take her, she'll find him herself. Or someone like Fafalor might find her and drag her to him. Javis sighed. <sighs> You're not going to let this one be, huh? Fine. I'll take you. I'll keep my promise, though. I'll protect you until I'm not physically able to. All right. Marla responded with a smile. Just promise me you won't die for my sake. Because then you have broken my heart twice in one night. <laughs> we wouldn't want that. Javis coyly said. 